Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. In the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the blessed Apostle John have unlocked for us the secrets of your word, grant, we pray, that we may grasp with proper understanding what he has so marvelously brought to our ears. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the beginning of the first letter of St. John. Beloved, what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked upon and touched with our hands, concerns the word of life. For the life was made visible. We have seen it and testify to it and proclaim to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was made visible to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim now to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. For our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing this so that our joy might be complete. The word of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are around him. Justice and judgment are the foundation of his throne. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his justice, and all peoples see his glory. Rejoice in the Lord, be just. 
Light dawns for the just, and gladness for the upright of heart. Be glad in the Lord, you just, and give thanks to his holy name. Rejoice in the Lord, you just. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one whom had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. The Gospel of the Lord. First of all, Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you for those of you that helped uh, give gifts to the Carmelites. We appreciate that, so thank you. And also, um, as we celebrate today's feast day, it's the feast day of St. John the Evangelist. And this is um, falling within the octave of Easter. So all of this week and through this coming Sunday, we celebrate each day equivalent to the celebration of Christmas. I did say Christmas, right? Or did I say Easter? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the, the gospel today threw me off a little bit if I said Easter. But the, we're celebrating the octave of Christmas. And so it's all celebrated as one day. But normally, the first day back after Christmas would be the uh, feast day of St. Stephen, who's a martyr. So we come from December 25th to December 26th, and it's immediately the martyrdom of St. Stephen. But yesterday, because it was a Sunday, the celebration was the feast day of the Holy Family. And in fact, all of these celebrations are filled with a understanding of how our Lord has revealed himself to us. Because even on the celebration of Christmas, beginning with the vigil, the Mass at midnight, the Mass during the day, there are different readings. And most of the time, there is an opportunity for the priest to use uh, whatever readings seem appropriate for the celebration of Christmas for the people. And generally, what we want to hear about is we want to hear that Jesus was in a manger and wrapped in swaddling clothes. We don't want to hear about the genealogy of Jesus necessarily, which gives all of the names. We had that reading uh, last week uh, during one of the Masses. We don't necessarily want to hear that on Christmas Day. And we also, unless we are lucky when we go to Mass on Christmas Day, we might hear the reading from the Gospel of John, which is, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. We might hear that. Because there is this understanding that we want to focus on the birth of Christ. We want us to understand and to experience how our Lord came to be incarnate among us. And today's first reading from the, gospel, from the letter of John teaches us that, teaches us that the Lord came and dwelt among us. But today's gospel seems a little bit different because it's the Easter story. It's the resurrection of our Lord. We hear this at Easter. 
this exact gospel. And it comes, as we know, within the octave of Easter, with the celebration of St. John the Evangelist. Well, the reason that we could think this reading is used today is because the disciple whom Jesus loved is generally understood to be St. John the Evangelist. And today is this feast day. And there's this wonderful account in today's gospel where Mary Magdalene goes to the tomb first, and then she goes and notices the burial cloth there, then goes and tells uh, the disciples, the apostles, that Jesus is not in the tomb. They come running to experience it. St. John, the beloved disciple, arrives first, because one of the things we know about him is that he was the youngest of the apostles, and he's also the only apostle that was not martyred, and that's why I'm wearing white today. So he's not a martyr. But what we hear is that he arrived at the tomb first, but he allows Peter to enter into the tomb first, because as we know, Peter is the first pope. He is the one that Jesus said that I will pass the keys of the kingdom to you. So he goes into the tomb first. But what we also hear in today's gospel is the very last line. John also goes into the tomb as well. And it says, he saw and believed. So there is something going on in today's gospel that there is all of this ranking about who experienced the risen Lord first. Because for that, it would mean that they would were able to testify on behalf of experiencing the risen Lord. And as we know, witnesses and testimony carry a great deal of power in the early church and influencing the early church community. But there's also something else about St. John as well. Because St. John was the one we might remember that when Jesus was upon the cross, he asked for St. John to care for his mother. So tradition has it that Mary was cared for by John until her dormition, her falling asleep. And we also know that there is a tradition that Mary lived with John in Ephesus, which was a major city, very large city at that time. And in fact, you can go to Ephesus and you can visit the house of Mary that John cared for Mary in her old age. And it's set up on a hill surrounded by sycamore trees overlooking the ancient city of Ephesus, which is really a ruin now, even though it had three million people in it at the time of Christ. And one of the things that we also know is that John died in Ephesus. So this race, this desire to be the first among those who witness the risen Lord is always linked to the incarnation. It's always linked to our Lord overcoming the power of sin and death once and for all. But in this season of Christmas, we are celebrating especially our Lord becoming fully human and divine, being one like us, born of a woman. And we also recognize that Mary, our mother, played a very important role in bringing the Christ into the world. But ultimately, what we know is that our Lord desires to have a relationship with each one of us. He desires that we know him fully within our hearts. And in this time that we celebrate his incarnation, 
I'm sure some of us are going through our own sufferings. Some of us are going through our own illnesses. Certainly with the rise in the number of Omicron cases, many of us might be very concerned about the pandemic continuing in our nation. But one of the things that we also know is that our Lord is with us. He continues to give himself to us. And we receive his body and blood at this Mass today as a reminder that he came into this world, first of all, as an infant, as a baby. But he also came into this world to bring about everlasting life, to save us from our sins. But as we know, he is also called Emmanuel. God is with us. And so our Lord is always with us as well. He never abandons us. He never uh, ignores our prayers or our desire for him to be close to us. Our Lord is in our heart. He gives himself fully to each one of us, and he desires that we experience his love as well. This is the time that we celebrate the birth of Christ, but it's also a time when we remember how much he loves each one of us. Let us bring our prayers before our Heavenly Father. Let us pray, first of all, for Francis, our Pope, for bishops, priests, deacons, and religious, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for those who are least in our world, for those who are sick, for those who are in need of God's healing, for those who are suffering, for those who are lonely, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for all those supporters of the Society Little Flower and for their special intentions, we pray to the Lord. Let us pray for Tyler Dukes and for those who have requested our prayers, we pray to the Lord. And let us remember our beloved dead, those who have gone before us, that they may be one with Christ, we pray to the Lord. And let us now bring our own prayers, our own longings before our Father in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Father, we bring all our prayers before you. We ask you to hear them through the intercession of St. John the Evangelist. We ask our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. We come for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. Sanctify the offerings we have made, O Lord, we pray, and grant that from the banquet of this supper we may draw the hidden wisdom of the eternal word, just as from this same source you revealed it to your Apostle John. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a safe sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the word made flesh, proclaimed by the Apostle John, may through the mis this mystery which we have celebrated ever dwell among us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us offer a prayer to Mary, our mother. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady Mount Carmel, go in the peace of Christ. The Mass is ended. Have a wonderful day. Thank you, and Merry Christmas.